Welcome to the Novigo's fourth lecture on SAP Transportation Management Practice Course. In this lecture, we cover tendering and subcontracting. So far in our previous lectures, we've covered order management and transportation planning components of SAP Transportation Management. We saw how we can receive orders from customers, how we can create OTRs and DTR and forwarding orders, how freight units will be created and how freight units can be planned into freight orders and freight booking using resources, networks and schedules. The purpose of this lecture is to cover the tendering and subcontracting component of SAP TM. By the end of this lecture, you will be familiar with the most important objects, their definition and their interaction within tendering and subcontracting. You will be familiar with the tendering process and different modes of tendering. This is the scenario which we work on throughout our course. Our company produces and exports chemical products. We build containers on our plant and send them overseas to our customers. In this scenario, our goal is to send those containers to the port of discharge. In order to do that, we have two options. We can use port of loading 1 or port of loading 2. We choose the port of loading while we are in the planning stage and by considering the schedules. As you can see, our transportation network has two stages. Stage 1 or pre-carriage, which is a road leg and will be done by trucks. And stage 2 or main carriage, which is an ocean leg and will be done with ships. This flowchart belongs to the overview of tendering and subcontracting step in SAP Transportation Management. Freight orders can be tendered to different carriers through this process. Also, freight cost calculation can be triggered at the end of this tendering process. Also, I need to mention that since freight bookings use the predefined schedules and carriers has already been assigned to these schedules, there is ne no need for tendering for freight booking. I'm going to explain more about tendering on next slides. Now let's discuss different ways of doing tendering. The first method is RFQ-based tendering. In this method, shipper or LSP sends freight request for quotation to the carrier. Then the carrier responds with the freight quotation, and then the shipper or LSP either awards or rejects the carrier. In the direct tendering, the shipper or LSP tenders the freight order to the carrier, then the carrier either confirms or rejects the freight order. In the broadcast tendering, the shipper or LSP sends freight requests for quotation to multiple carriers at the same time. Then later on, either it accepts the first acceptable offer or the best offer. Here I have my subcontracting tab in the freight order we just created opened and as you can see the carrier has not yet been assigned and no charges has been calculated so the first thing i would like to show you is the carrier ranking list here you can see the two carriers we have available for our first stage here is the prices of each of them 50 euros for the first one and 125 euros for the second one they have been ranked based on the prices that they have now i would like to start the tendering process all i have to do is to choose the automatic tendering and i choose the tendering manager and the initial phase of tendering has been done here you can see that the uh, RFQ has been sent to the first carrier and the status is open and what we have to do right now is for the is to wait for the carrier to respond so we received our response from the carrier they've sent us a quotation and they've accepted the RFQ and as you can see, the award status is evaluation pending. So what we have to do is to either award or reject the carrier's quotation. 
Now, uh, awarding the carrier's quotation is something that needs to be done in the background. So I'll perform it in the background. Then you guys can see the result. As you can see, I have awarded the carrier. It means that the status of uh, our RFQ is closed. This carrier has been selected and awarded. And this RFQ has been omitted. Now, if I open my charges tab, I should be able to see the charges calculated. Here are the charges that I have for this carrier, 50 euros. It only has one line item, which is a mileage charge. And you can see the details here. I have prepared some exercises based on the lecture we just went through. Exercise number one. Why is it not usual to do tendering on freight bookings? Exercise number two. What are the advantages of broadcast tendering over peer-to-peer -peer tendering? Exercise number three. What is a request freight code or RFQ and what purpose does it serve? In this slide, you can see the answers for those questions.